It is unavoidable to come across a time in history when religion wasn't an element in political decisions that led to a catastrophic event that caused the loss of lives. This isn't to say that religion is inherently flawed, because in the countless cases, religion has become a positive contributing factor that improved people's lives. And this isn't to say that political choices made by politicians aren't contributing factors that cause disastrous results. You see, the acceptance and practice of religion should be a personal decision that, regardless of any overwhelmingly positive attributes, shouldn't be forcefully pressed upon others to refer, concur, or apply. You see, religious beliefs aren't the only appliable methods that could be used to uplift and improve people's lives, regardless of their skin color, location, faith, or race. I believe there are others. For example, the influence of several religious practices, including group participation, has enhanced people's cooperation, moral responsibilities, and even life expectancy. Religious involvement among young people is often correlated to or contributed to a lower probability of substance abuse, premarital sex, and juvenile delinquency. Could it be that religion alone isn't responsible for these positive outcomes? Could it simply be that experienced elders and peer communal guidance form these positive results? Nevertheless, democratic nations still must remain cognitive of how religion could lead to false positives and later become an Achilles heel. Here's a story of four elevator company co-workers who just happen to live in the same building. One co-worker is a devout Muslim, and because of his religion, he doesn't eat pork. The second co-worker is a Hindu, and because of her personal beliefs, she doesn't eat beef. And the third co-worker is a Christian, and in most situations, he eats whatever he considers healthy and good for him. The fourth co-worker is an atheist, and he doesn't believe any particular religion. He just believes that being a responsible, honest person is an important attribute. On a national holiday, they had a day off from work and each of them decided to go to their favorite market to purchase food for their family. They just happened to meet in the elevator at the same time on their way to the first floor of their building. And after they cordially greeted each other, they headed out of the door to go shopping. Now each of them returned from their favorite market with the items they brought. The Muslim co-worker purchased a bag filled with thick slices of chicken and beef. The Hindu co-worker returned from her favorite market with a bag full of chicken, vegetables, and the Christian co-worker came back from his favorite market with a backpack full of beef, chicken, and pork, and also an inexpensive bottle of red wine. He may have other plans for his night. The atheist co-worker returned with a bag full of organic vegetables and unfortunately, another bag full of junk food. The four entered the elevator and selected the floor each wanted to get off. While in the elevator, they each kept aware of each other's personal preferences. They didn't want the contents in their packages to demean or insult any individual who had religious restrictions on coming into contact with an item in their package. Each of them didn't want to impede on or appear insensitive and remained cognitive of each other's personal beliefs. While in the elevator, they each placed their packages in positions that ensured that the contents in their packages weren't invading the personal space of one another. Suddenly, the elevator stopped between the second and third floors. The four co-workers looked at each other in a state of surprise. They spent a moment assessing their situation, and each suggested a solution. After each of them explained their solution, they collectively decided on a few procedures to implement. They were able to remove the elevator's control panel, and each of them used their selective skills to uncover the cause of the elevator's malfunction. After employing a few of their suggestions, they managed to succeed in getting the elevator restarted. 
in a relatively short time, they were able to come to a consensus that resulted in a solution they all could agree upon. They were able to get to the floor they each selected. It didn't matter whose method was implemented to solve the situation they found themselves in. The point was that they agreed upon a method they could use and felt was efficient enough for them to succeed and solve their predicament. They didn't become overly obsessive with selecting which procedure should be used to solve their predicament. They all took their time to respectfully find a solution they could agree upon. The only thing that mattered was that they were able to collectively use their skills to solve a problem that inconvenienced or could have endangered them all. This story shows how individuals should overcome any personal prejudices they have and respectfully interact with one another to accomplish goals that are beneficial to them all and not just one of them. This is merely because they respected each other's expertise and opinions without focusing on their differences. They simply absorbed the mutually positive aspects of each other's skills and opinions without impeding or solely focusing on their own personal beliefs. Now, I am aware that this doesn't sound like the world we live in today, but I hope, I really hope, this could become the way we choose to live together one day in the future. If you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before us, use one family. I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay strong, safe, and healthy wherever you are in the world.